Inger here with CVH Home Care Warranty. Uh, today, we are going to go with the issue of garbage disposals. And then after that, we're going to move on to what is these nice little receptacles in the back of our wall issue of the kitchen and referred to as those GFCI receptacles, meaning ground fault circuit interrupters. They're there for our safety and well-being on that issue. So let's uh, move on to the old garbage disposal here. Hey, they're fantastic. Uh, I remember uh, when they first came out, I, I thought, wow, you must be really rich if you had a garbage dis disposal in your house. Of course, that was back when, well, we won't go back that far. So uh, great convenience, great advantage in a particular home. Obviously, we have the issue of running water, yay, nice vacuum switch for the garbage disposal. So we hear it running, and remember, you always want to have your water running with that garbage disposal. Leave the water run, switch it off, and therefore you make sure all that particulate is going down that particular drain. So we ran our water through, we got our garbage disposal running, we're all happy like that, and now let's go to the issue of, wow, what do we do if something gets jammed? Well, that is a problem. Believe me, uh, one particular Christmas, I remember back in the day, maybe about seven years ago, I was gonna be the big helpful person in the kitchen, so I decided to peel all the potatoes for mashed potatoes for Christmas dinner. So I peeled them all and I thought, well, I'm gonna take them down to the garbage disposal. Bad idea. That is not a workable scenario. Please do not put potato peelings down in the garbage disposal in a high quantity amount, which I tried to do. I ended up, therefore, pulling all the pipes apart, fixing it up, and making sure that's taken care of, and listening to a very unhappy wife at that time. Obviously, we cannot just send anything down that garbage disposal, so please be aware of that. So, if it does become jammed or you feel like it is not working properly, obviously make sure it is off. Next, on every particular garbage disposal you move in, you will find yourself a nice little Allen key, just like this. Okay, I don't know why they call them an Allen wrench, uh, but it's been that way ever since the turn of time that I remember. So we're gonna go with an Allen wrench, okay? So what do I do? Well, you open up your lower cabinet, and right dead center in the middle, you have your particular garbage disposal, okay? And we can see, oh, Shiloh Plumbing, if we ever had a particular problem, we can obviously give them a call. Obviously, you can call us at CBH Warranty, and maybe we can do something right over the phone and verbally discuss this through the steps, all right? So I take my Allen wrench, and I want to feel with my finger down here exactly where the center point is for this particular issue where the Allen wrench will go. So I have my little finger right there. I put my Allen wrench in. If there is something jammed, this will definitely break it loose. If it doesn't, remove the Allen wrench and call either Shiloh Plumbing or us. We will take it from there. All right. So let's say we had a, uh, well, what do I want to say? Something like a, I don't know, some sort of pit got caught in there and we broke it loose fantastic well do we want to start it up and get it jammed again or do we want to actually possibly reach in and pull it out well if we're going to reach in and pull it out obviously i'm going to swing this around a few times to make sure it is totally clear and free i remove the allen wrench then for my own personal safety i'm going to reach back and i'm going to unplug the plug-in okay now I can safely reach into the disposal and pull whatever material may be there, which is jamming out, pull it out, throw it into the garbage, and we can dispose of it in that fashion. If that's now free and clear, we're all happy. I'm gonna go back, plug in the receptacle. And when I'm plugging in, I wanna make sure that I don't wanna knock off this nice little plastic vacuum tube. If you knock that off, your disposal will not run. So we wanna make sure we're not knocking that off. Okay, so we put it back behind that water line. 
My Allen wrench, actually where you'll find them is connected to either the disposal or you'll actually find it taped to a particular uh, drain line, okay? So, I'll leave that right there. We'll come back up, close up my cabinet, start this up again, got my water running, hit the switch. We are running clean, smooth, and no problem. So that's dealing with the disposal. Now, how many have had that issue where you have a disposal and, wow, what went down there? Heck, this is worse than the bathroom, you know? What can you say? Well, that brings us to our nice cleaning little issue. Ironically enough, my wife ordered something online with, for our garbage disposal, and in turn, it is called Mr. Scrappy Disposal Brush. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've never seen one before in my life. And when that showed up yesterday in the afternoon in the mail, I said, honey, can I borrow that? Yes, why? Well, ironically, I'm doing this little gig tomorrow on show, and we're going to do something about garbage disposal. She says, go for it. Enter it. What do you do? Obviously, you have an issue where you have water and other particulates in a drain. They are getting chopped up, disposed of, and going down. We all know that this particulate will never 100% wash down the drain. It's just like cleaning the sink. Well, we have to clean that disposal as well. So what you want to do, obviously get some sort of brush like Mr. Scrappy here. She bought it online. I don't know exactly where, but I'm sure you can find them. Put a little particular issue of a liquid be bleach, excuse me, uh, such as soft scrub or something of that type of a product. Go down into it, scrub it around inside that disposal. No, we are not running it. We are just scrubbing the walls and above all, reach back up and hit the backside or, or underneath the rubber flippers down there. So the rubber flippers down in here where a particulate will sit to and actually stick to the bottom side, you want to scrub that off. That's where that unbearable fragrance is coming from. So if you have soft scrub, I'm going to scrub it out here. I'm going to stick it down in there. I'm going to spin it around, scrub off the walls, scrub off underneath there, get it clean. Then I will go back, get my water running again, put the disposal on, and rinse that all down the line. Therefore, we will now have a very functioning garbage disposal. It will be clean, and we will have, obviously, a much better fragrance coming out through the kitchen area. Turn it off. I'm going to let that run so everything clears down the line. Shut it off, and we are happy campers at that point. So, above all, anytime you're doing anything with the fact of a garbage disposal, you have your hands anywhere near that particular issue, number one, always unplug. Please be aware of that. All too often, we hate to say it, something may get caught down in there, people will just dive in. Well, you want to be very, very aware of obviously moving parts, hands, fingers, and those types of things, and if something became unjammed, then you have your fingers still down in there. Well, we're going to let it go at that. So be safe on that scenario, okay? So be aware of that, make sure you always unplug for your own personal safety. So speaking of safety, Let's go to a GFCI. GFCIs, you'll see them anywhere in your kitchen area, okay? You'll find them in your bathroom. You will find them in your laundry room. Hmm, let's think about this. What does that have in common? Anywhere there is water, you will find a ground fault circuit interrupter. The reason is, anytime you may have water with electricity, and there happens to be a particular issue of, what do I want to say, uh, water arcing to or something of this nature, it immediately shuts off. Okay, you corrected the problem where the water hit the electrical line. This is tripped, meaning this. If I come here and you're going to see, well, one says test, the other one says reset. If I hit test, that popped out. So I need to reset that. How do I do that? Just simply reach in, push that. You saw that little light come on. And right now you probably see a very faint green light in there. There you go. That tells me that this box now is ready and active for any particular item you may want to plug in. A toaster, better yet, 
a blender. It's in the afternoon. It could be that time where you could be mixing something special up for you and your husband. After all, it's been hard for yourself at home as well as the husband at work or reverse the issue. It could be the husband at home and the wife at work. You want to make sure happy wife, happy life. It's a simple issue. So GFCIs, I believe, don't quote me on the code, I think of anything within six feet of water, you will have a GFCI. This is parallel to this box, same issue on this box, so on, so on, so on. So anywhere you may have water source, everything will come to this particular box, which has a built-in GFCI. So if I have something plugged in back on this particular box, it doesn't work. Where do I go? I'm going to go right back to this and check to make sure it is ready to go. So that's dealing with GFCIs. You will find them in bathrooms. You will find them obviously dealing with your refrigerator panel. So if we spun around 180 degrees here, directly behind us, there's another GFCI. Check it. There's my test. You're here at pop. I'm going to reset it. There's that faint green line. So therefore, you see that green light in there? Our refrigerator will be plugging right into that. Again, why a refrigerator? Water source, ice maker, water dispense, perfect. Those are the things you want to protect yourself. And your appliances, that's what it's there for. So, feel free to contact any of us at CBH Home Care. Uh, you can talk to Katie, fantastic. You got Jamie. We have a new person on staff, and I just she just started. And I forgot her name. I'm sorry, from the crowd. Taylor. Taylor, fantastic young lady. She's brand new. I barely see these folks. I, I'm in in the morning. I'm out. Uh, I, I basically spend ten minutes in the office. Uh, so. I think we have a question. Sure. Yes. Okay, yes. Um, the question is: Do you suggest we install water softeners? Water softeners. First and foremost, absolutely, I would definitely put in a water softener. Before you have that softener, we're going to put it in line. So here is my pictures. I love pictures. We're going to say Mr. Scrappy is a water softener. This is my water line coming in. Before we get to the water softener, you want to put in a pre-filter system. It's a very simple concept. You have a valve that will shut your water off. You have a filter system in there. So when that filter needs to be changed, and you'll be able to see it because it's actually going to turn to a, oh, kind of a dark golden brown, because what you're doing is filtering out a lot of the issues of the minerals in the water, which is found in all water. Filter it first, go to the water softener to have it do its magic, then therefore go to the rest of the home. It's there to protect hot water heaters, refrigerators, if you have ice makers and their filtering system. You have multiple aspects of your lines themselves. Those valves, on and off valves, underneath each particular you know, sink, bathroom sinks, kitchen sinks, on down the line. You're protecting all that investment you have. So definitely, yeah, water softeners do cost some money. I myself actually have to replace mine this year. I've had it for 20 plus years. And yeah, I gotta replace it. But I'll guarantee you, the reason it lasted 20 some years is I have a pre-filter system and every time I change that, it's like every three months, it is a dark goldish brown and it as heavy as a brick, it seems like. It's starting off as a white clean filter per white when I set it in, but when it's time to change, it you know it's time to change. So, good question from the crowd. Any other questions? I think that's it. All, All right. right, Katie, do you wanna wrap us up? Yeah.